Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to go through this uh, Lico number 490, uh, the maze. So this question was asked by, um, mostly by, uh, by Amazon, by Amazon, also a little bit by Google, Microsoft and Bloomberg, uh, and also BitDance. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive in. So I think, um, this graph is pretty, uh, intuitive to explain what, what the question is asking. So that where you have a ball, and the ball will keep rolling until we hit the wall, right? So, and when the ball hits the wall and the ball can change the direction. So, uh, let's say if the ball goes this way and then it has the direction that change to, uh, goes down or change back to what it was before. And, uh, so our task to, is to write a function to figure out can the ball reach to the, uh, the destination or not. Um, in this case, yes. So let's walk through it together. So the ball first, as you can see, uh, first go, go down, uh, go left, go here, and then go down. And then as you can see, the solution is right here. I'm just following this. So first we go left and then go down and then go left and then go down and then go right and then go down and then go right. And then this is where it stops. And, uh, that's why we can have a solution for this uh, maze. So again, uh, the ball will keep rolling down until it hits a wall, in which case, uh, where it will change the direction. And uh, so this is a classic graph problem. And then uh, I will solve it, use both, uh, BFS and, uh, and DFS. So let's solve it with uh, DFS first. Oh, so in order to uh, to do a DFS, we have to do we have to use a stack. So the stack initial point is the the start point, and it's already represented a list of uh, coordinates because the start is uh, represented like this, as you can see. So and then we add we need the uh, n and m. Uh, it's representing the number of rows and number of the columns. You can see so, and then we need uh, the direction so the ball can go four ways, uh, either go up and down or go uh, left or to the right. So uh, we need a, a direction that uh, where the ball can. And after that, we need a stop set. Uh, basically, it keep track of where the ball stopped, so we don't we don't duplicate, we don't repeat our work because that set is gonna mark where the ball has stopped so we don't go back that that okay now let's do uh the dfs part and uh so whenever there's something in the stack and we will um do the following so the loop will keep going until the stack is empty and then we pop it off for the first element uh, basically it's the row continent and also the column continent we pop it off and now we need a, um, uh, destination or stopped criteria where if the, if the spot that we standing, the ball is standing at is exactly equal to destination, we are done. And then next, what we need to do is to, um, when the, when the ball is stopped and there are four directions to, that allows the ball to go, right? And, um, And we have a no, uh, the new uh, row coordinate and also the new uh, column coordinate. So initially, uh, it will be the same as the current row and current column because it's standing way worse. And then the ball will start rolling. I organized the coordinate a little bit uh, to make it easier to see. Uh, like this. So uh, the next will be so once again, the new coordinate will be, uh, initially will be standing where it is started, right? So, and then, uh, this is the, uh, the condition where allows the ball keep rolling, right? So if the ball, the next, I mean, the next one, uh, up, because we plus the dr, which is the delta of row and the delta of coordinate, if in the next step, it does not hit any walls, uh, for the rows also for the column and also it is not equal to one because one means it's a wall right in here wall is represented by one 
So if the next, the ne the new position is not a wall, that means it's a uh, it's a passage, it's an empty space, and then in that case we can. So as you can see, we so we keep adding the delta r and also the delta c to the new position until uh, this con condition is violated. That's why we put a, a while loop. So basically, this is simulating uh, the ball keep rolling until it hits a wall or yeah, hit, hit the edge. Basically, this is one hitting the edge or hitting a wall. Right? So basically, this is a scene. So after we exit from this while loop, that means we are at the wall right now. If the this new position is, is where I mean is in the stop set, that means it's where we have stopped before, and then we keep uh, going in the this for loop. So we will keep exploring other directions. That means we have stopped here before, right? Otherwise, we mark the new coordinate in the stop set. So we don't, again, we don't uh, repeat our work. At the same time, we append the new coordinate to the stack. So we bring it back to the, to the front of the, of, the, of the while loop, of the bigger while loop. And they keep checking the condition and also exploring different directions, etc. So we keep uh, executing in this, um, in this bigger while loop until upon where this is empty in the stack. And when the stack is empty, and then that means um, this is this maze is not solvable, and then we just return as false. Okay, so run it, works, and uh, looks okay. So um, in terms of, a t so, oh yes, so this is only the DFS, and uh, for BFS, which is the breath first search, and what we the difference is between uh, the main difference between DFS and is that uh, for BFS we use a queue and for DFS we use a stack. So for queue, the rule of thumb is to uh, first in first out. So that's why we populate from from the front. So it's a slightly change to the code. Uh, instead of popping off from the end, so we popping off from the front. Let's run that. It works as well. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the time complexity. So in the worst case scenario, if there is a so no solution and keep exploring different paths, um, the time complexity is gonna be B O M times N because you're just trying all the directions possible. And for the space complexity, we have a um, stopped set keep track of all the coordinates so in the in that worst case scenario there will be all the coordinate coordinate will be marked right it's, it's hitting the wall everywhere so that's also m by n for space complexity and also the stack uh, is also the worst case scenario is also a big o of m times n as well um yeah so this is the my solution to this problem. I hope this is helpful. If it is, please like and subscribe. That will be a huge support. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.